Welcome to another One From Zero video. Uh, in this one, we are going to actually show you an analog process to make a movie. We don't have a lot of these here at One From Zero, but we have a few. And today we're going to make a cameraless film using 16 millimeter film. A cameraless film is a film that does not require a camera whatsoever. So we're going to draw directly onto the film. I have lots of different things here, different markers, paints, sharpies, different ways to scratch on film. Some of them will probably work, some of them not so much. So we'll see. I have two different types of 16 millimeter film today that we're going to use, and I'm going to show you two different processes. The first is hand drawing on 16 millimeter film. This that I have in my hand here is called Clear Leader. There is nothing put onto this. This is just the base that you would apply uh, a, a light sensitive emulsion to, but it's just clear. Right. We're going to paint on this, draw on this. The other thing that I have is what's called Black Leader. This has an emulsion on it, and it's not a light sensitive emulsion like um, a film designed for, to go through a camera, it's designed to block all of the light. So <clears throat> this is completely opaque and what we're going to do with this is scratch off some of this black emulsion so when it's projected the area that has been scratched will come through as white light and so then you'll have white on black. Um, for us, because we do live in a digital world, we can then take these uh, movies that we make by hand crafting them and hand drawing them and hand scratching them. We're gonna, we can digitize them, edit them more, overlay them, combine them in post-production. So we have the best of both worlds here. So this is 16 millimeter film. Let's understand what the frame looks like before we start drawing. I drew, I took a piece of film and just made myself a little guide. With 16 millimeter film, 16 millimeter refers to the width, or actually the diagonal uh, of the actual piece of film. Each frame, so if we're thinking about what, what's on screen, each frame exists with 16 millimeter between the sprockets. These holes are used to move the film through a film projector, but they also delineate where the actual frame is. When we do this, we want to remember that for every 24 frames we draw, we have one second of film, of a movie. All right. So I'm use, I've used this, so if I'm one, to be able to visualize it for you, but also, oh, if I know that I want to do something for five frames and then change to something else, or if I want to do a specific rhythm or have a specific amount of timing, I can use this as a guide. Okay. So I'm going to start with my clear leader. And um, this is double perf, which it means that there is um, sprockets on either side. With double perf film, it's not as, you don't have to worry quite as much about how you're holding it in terms of getting it to project properly. But if I'm holding it like this, this part, the top is called the head, and that's the first frame that we're going to see. And as we go down, this is called the tail. That would be the last frame of your movie. So as you go down chronologically, this is the beginning, and we go down like that. In that case, then we're going to have sprockets on both sides. If I had what's called single per film, I would want to make sure that the sprockets were on the left. All right. But it doesn't matter if I have double perf. So as I start to go, draw, the first frame is on the top. So when I do this, I have lots of different colored things that I might want to work with, but what, the ones that are going to work best are the ones that are permanent markers, permanent paint. When I'm choosing things to use, obviously I want to consider the fact that it's a pretty small frame that I'm drawing on, but also um, I want to make sure that it's transparent so that some light will go through, and um, I want to permanent, things that are permanent, 
permanent ink will adhere better. Things that are water-based will sometimes uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of come up and move around. They're not necessarily a bad thing, but if they don't dry, they are going to have a problem going through the projector. So, but Sharpies always work. So Sharpies, if you're trying to figure out what to use and you've never done this before, start with a Sharpie. So I'm going to, you know, take a, have a little dot that I'm going to have move around the frame. And with each frame, so it's 1 24th of a second, um, I'm going to have it move up and around, uh, kind of like Pong, but you guys probably don't remember that, or Breakout. Right. <laughs> What's interesting is that I've made an interesting pattern, even though I was thinking about where the ball is going to be on the frame. Um, on the screen. <clears throat> that, um, that's something that you'll, you'll notice that patterns as we go down translate to interesting uh, progressions on screen. What I did here thinking about a shape is what we would call frame animation. I'm thinking about each individual frame and maybe now I'll sort of move, have a triangle that I also have moving around not quite as predictably, maybe. Right, maybe this one's a little bit more random and bouncing around the screen a little bit more, right? Um, it's kind of losing its triangular shape as we go. Right? So that's a frame I'm thinking about. Here are the the sprockets. This is the, what's going to be on screen. I'm thinking about frame for frame. We can also do something that is called frameless, where I'm just going to kind of paint on it and then see what it looks like when I project it. Because the variations in texture and color will kind of translate to movement when we project it. So maybe I will use one of these. These, oh no, these don't. These are uh, watercolor pens. I'm not sure how well these are going to work. We'll try. But I'll do a frameless style, which I'm just going to kind of move up and down like this. And we can see it's kind of beating up a little bit. This may or may not dry, right? So I might end up not using that. But if I do that, it looks like it's just sort of a random line. But as I project it, it's going to turn into a wavy moving line as, as it's projected. So I can do a frame approach or a frameless approach. <laughs> so let's see, I've got lots of different Sharpies that I've tried. Again, the watercolor pen is not working so great, but I might try projecting a little bit of that to see. What else? I have lots of different things. Nail polish can work, but you want to remember with nail polish that it has to be transparent because sometimes if you paint something on like a paint or nail polish um, too much, it'll just be opaque and it will just block the light of the projector entirely. All right. So I want to be careful with that. that I think this is transparent enough. It'll probably translate to that light green, but sometimes a thick paint or a thick nail polish will um, just block the light entirely and just read as opaque. And then it's okay that it'll still read as black or white. There'll be something there, but the color won't always come through. So those are different ways to use the clear leader, uh, both in the framed and frameless approach. Let us move that and use the black leader. <clears throat> so this is this is completely opaque. If we project this, the screen's going to be dark. So first we want to find the side that has the emulsion. There is going to be a side that is a little bit more reflective, but sometimes it's hard to tell. So you're going to just have to start by scratching a little bit to see what side is you're looking for. Oh, and I did get up the right one. All right, when you do this, you see that a little piece of emulsion, this stuff came off. All right. I've got little things all over there. And now you can see when I held that up against there, 
we can see that the light's coming through and we're seeing through it. So if I do it on the wrong side, when I scratch, it's not black, it's actually white plastic, right? Um, in that case, I'm not going to really get rid of the black until I've literally gone through the whole thing. So I want to make sure that when I scratch, the black emulsion is coming off. All right, so in that case, once I have that, I'll take off my test piece. Same thing in terms of the top being the first frame, the bottom being the last frame. Then I, I can scratch in lots of different ways. Exacto knives are really good. They give you some, something to hold on to and they have a really sharp right, tip. So I can get a really nice, precise with that. So that's a really good way to scratch on the film. I also have a couple other things I've collected. This is actually a seam ripper for um, sewing. I pulled that out of my sewing box. I don't actually know if it's going to work and it doesn't really seem to be quite as effective. Um, that's interesting because it is, when I put it on my finger, it's pretty sharp. Uh, that one didn't work. Um, pins do work, but sometimes they can be hard to control. So sometimes if you attach it to something else, it gives you a little bit of something to kind of hold on to. Other things, again, the frameless works really well here. So I could take this. So just go down like this, kind of scraping it off, kind of creating my own, you can see the emulsion there, creating my own little random multiple squigglies. And then, then I can add color, right? I could overlay this with something else. Uh, in post-production in my video editor or I could start to add color here and play around play around with how the color comes in and out and then draw on top of that right. I can do that another thing that I can do that is as long as I don't remove too much I can make patterns with punching out and removing some of the film. So if I wanted to, every three frames, four frames, do this. Something else, uh, if you spend any time in the scrapbooking section, uh, one at your local art supply store, craft supply store, they have lots of these with like lots of different shapes and that kind of stuff. You may want to play around with that. It's going to create different patterns depending on how you do that. So there are lots of different ways that you can manipulate stuff. You can glue stuff onto the film, right? Anything like that. Glitter sometimes looks cool. Glitter glue. Uh, with that kind of stuff, we're going to be really careful when we project it. And that's what the next video is going to be. How to project and get this stuff digital.